We are kicking off today with Rhea Ripley, as it was at WrestleMania 40 that Mommy retained the women's world title with a hard-fought victory over Becky Lynch. Her celebration was short-lived, though, as she was attacked backstage by her former friend-turned-rival Liv Morgan, which resulted in Ripley being legitimately injured. Morgan's attack on Ripley was in response to Ripley brutally attacking Morgan last summer as a way to write Liv off of TV so she could recover from another shoulder injury. Morgan returned as the final entrant in the Women's Royal Rumble match in January, and it appeared that she was going to be Ripley's next challenger following the attack last week. Fightful Select reports that the injury took place when Morgan launched Ripley into the wall during the attack, and this was a freak accident, and there's no backstage heat on Liv. At this week's Raw for Montreal's Bell Center, Ripley appeared with her arm in a sling and wasted no time in revealing that she'd been asked to vacate the women's world title. Ripley will be benched for a few months, and her anger was on full display on Raw, and as she cited what the title meant to her, Ripley, with a heavy heart, laid the gold down in the ring. Ripley then addressed Morgan, calling her out for the attack that led to this moment, and Liv, evidently relishing in Rhea's misery, made her way to the ring, and security had to step in. Security tried to stop both women, and the segment concluded with Ripley knocking down a security guard and leaving Raw to go to the road to recovery. On Twitter, Rhea had just a few words and pointed out that she'd been champion for 380 days, but will now have to focus on recovering before she sets her sight on gold again. Following the segment, Paul Triple H Levesque shared a video on Instagram of himself and Rhea and said in the caption that she'll come back tougher, stronger, and more dominant. Triple H is one of the many WWE names who have sent their best to Rhea Ripley, as the roster is ultimately hoping for the best for the young former champion. This is a massive setback, and not how Ripley's historic reign should have ended, and we'd like to echo the roster by wishing the Australian a full and speedy recovery. Following on from a blockbuster WrestleMania 40, WWE has garnered the attention of fans with a new storyline hinting at the return of a certain dark superstar. On last week's Raw, fans experienced glitches and ominous music which was followed by cryptic tweets by WWE that would quickly be deleted by the promotion. This would be followed by glitches and music on last week's SmackDown, and these teases were taken to the next level on this week's episode of Raw. During the entrance of the New Day, a glitch appeared featuring a QR code, and when scanned, it took you to two sets of unfinished letters that, when overlapped, reveal a URL. This URL took fans to a video that displayed the message, Time to wake up, take my hand, things will be better, and also featured a Greek man looking at the shadow of a crow. This Greek image is referencing the philosopher Plato, whose cave allegory said that what people perceive as reality is akin to showing someone the shadow of an image, but not the image itself. The idea behind the cave allegory is that what man perceives is not what's really out there, as mankind cannot comprehend the truth of what is out there, and thus relies on these shadows. For weeks it's been speculated this is building to the return of Bo Dallas under his previous gimmick of Uncle Howdy as a way to continue the legacy of his late brother Bray Wyatt. Wyatt died tragically young in the summer of 2023, and if Uncle Howdy is returning, he may not be coming back to WWE alone. In the SmackDown message, the words, You forgot about us appeared, with fans thinking this us means that there are others set to return other than Uncle Howdy. Alexa Bliss is a name that's come up given her past association with Bray, and Eric Rowan is another name fans believe could be a part of this new Wyatt family. Rowan recently had to pull from independent appearances due to what's been called a new contractual obligation, with many expecting this to be a newly signed WWE deal. Following the success of 2022's White Rabbit, a new mystery is afoot in WWE, and what do you think this is all leading towards? Let us know in the comments section below. On Raw, Cody Rhodes was ready to focus on the future and look ahead to Backlash, where he will face either AJ Styles or LA Knight at WWE's first French premium live event. Cody made sure to thank his WrestleMania Shield Seth Rollins for his support and had some choice words for The Rock, who recently did some reflecting on social media of his own. Online, Rock vowed to make Cody Rhodes bleed again, and on Raw, Rhodes countered back by saying, If I'm going to bleed, you're going to bleed with me. Rhodes finally addressed Roman Reigns' absence and new developments surrounding the bloodline with Solo Sokoa taking charge and Tama Tonga kicking out Jimmy Uso from the group. 
Cody then brought out Jay Uso, who was set to take on Finn Balor later in the show, and sensing a Judgment Day numbers game, Rhodes offered to be Jay's shield, only for Uso to decline. Jay would rather take care of business on his own, and Rhodes left the ring before leaving the door for him and Jay to yeet again in the future. Ever since Jay Uso left the bloodline, he has embarked on an exceptional singles run on Raw, but so far, his pursuit of championship gold has been routinely thwarted by Jimmy. The pair settled the score at WrestleMania 40, where Jay defeated his treacherous brother, and last week on Raw, Jay became the number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. Jay beat Drew McIntyre and two others in a fatal four-way for the title shot, and back on this week's Raw, he was ambushed by Finn Balor before their match could get underway. Despite this, Jay was able to recover and defeat Balor with a splash, and the World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest emerged post-match to confront his challenger. The rest of Judgment Day then attacked Jay from behind, but Uso was able to smartly evade the group, and he escaped through the crowd as a furious priest looked on. There was a rather awkward spot after the match as Jay left when a fan stood in his way and Uso had to gently push him to the side. This was a solid match out of Uso and Balor that concluded with the challenger getting one over on the champion and his cronies, and Jay was once again incredibly popular with the fans. Whether Uso beats Priest or not, time will tell, but given his support and ability to withstand a defeat from a credibility standpoint, Uso is the best option to challenge Priest at this point. For decades, WWE's mantra was that they don't work with others, but in recent years, we've seen collaborations like Shinsuke Nakamura and Noah and Jordan Grace at the Royal Rumble. Recently, sources close to Nick Khan told Sports Illustrated that WWE is exploring potential collaborative plans and that Triple H oversaw Grace being brought in this past January. One company it'd certainly be interesting to see WWE work with is AEW, and when speaking to Comic Book, Tony Khan was asked if he'd be open to such a partnership. He said, It's an interesting thought. It would depend on the circumstance. Despite being each other's biggest competitor, WWE and AEW have made for strange bedfellows in the past, as several AEW stars appeared on Raw in 2022. Brian Danielson, Chris Jericho, and Paul White appeared in video messages to John Cena, congratulating John on his 20th anniversary of his main roster debut. Billy Gunn appeared at the 2019 WWE Hall of Fame ceremony despite being under an AEW deal at the time, but a deal couldn't be reached for Gunn to be a part of a DX reunion in 2022. Whether AEW works with WWE or not, we could be getting a massive collaboration within a matter of months between WWE and the newly formed Marigold promotion. When Rossi Agawa was fired from stardom, it was immediately believed that he would be setting up his own company, and Marigold was officially announced yesterday. It's been reported that Julia will work some dates for the new company before transitioning to WWE later this year, but ties between Marigold and WWE may extend further than that. Tokyo Sports reports that Rossi has initiated talks with WWE regarding potential interpromotional matches and hopes to have Kairi Sane and Io Sky at an event this summer. Both women are stardom alum who benefited greatly under Ogawa's watch, and Rossi himself appeared alongside Julia at NXT Stand and Deliver during WrestleMania weekend. In this new era of WWE, it seems that nothing is entirely off the table, and would you like to see WWE collaborate with others, including potentially AEW? Give your thoughts down below. Back to Raw as Triple H appeared on the show alongside Raw General Manager Adam Pearce to bring about another major change in the form of some new title belts. These new titles were covered up and were on a podium in the ring, and The Game and Pierce discussed the tag team division and brought out Raw Tag Team Champions Awesome Truth. To loud Awesome Truth chants, Triple H congratulated the pair on their WrestleMania win while announcing that moving forward, they'll be known as the WWE World Tag Team Champions. The new titles were then unveiled in WWE's latest opportunity to hammer home the idea of a new era in WWE, while also doing away with the eyesores that were the former tag title belts. This was a fun segment, as new title designs are always fun to see, and our truth confusing Triple H for Tommaso Ciampa was a funny bit. Speaking of Ciampa, this segment led to a triple threat match pitting DIY against the New Day and the Creeds with a World Tag Team title opportunity on the line. As one may imagine, with three talented teams, this was an incredibly fun party match with non-stop action and creative spots, and the right team going over in DIY was the cherry on top. 
As a thank you for his mentoring ahead of WrestleMania, Sami Zayn repaid Chad Gable with an Intercontinental title match that played out during this week's episode of Raw. The match was everything the fans expected out of both the competitors, as Zayn and Gable displayed a classic and power-packed wrestling showdown for the fans in the Bell Center. Despite Gable's best efforts, a last-minute halluva kick sealed the win for Zayn in the latest championship setback for the Alpha Academy leader. Following the end, Gable, in a show of respect, raised Sammy's hand in victory and exited the ring, giving Zayn the chance to celebrate with his fellow Canadians. However, as Sami Zayn went to greet his wife after his victory, Gable attacked him from behind and continued the assault ringside, and Raw ended with Gable locking in the ankle lock. Zayn was left straddled from the top turnbuckle as Gable refused to break the hold, leaving fans in shock to see this friendship crumbled to pieces. For years, Becky Lynch has been a top name in WWE, but her off-screen situation has attracted significant attention as it's been reported that her deal with WWE will expire this year. During the build-up to WrestleMania 40, the man addressed questions about her contract in a light-hearted manner, stating that nobody had come up to her to discuss the matter in detail. Things have changed since then, as PW Insider reports that WWE is prioritizing the completion of Becky Lynch's new contract before her current deal expires in approximately eight weeks. Becky Lynch is coming off a huge defeat at the hands of Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania 40, and she's also spoken recently about stepping away from the ring when Rue begins school. Lynch has also stated her intention to carefully weigh her options and make an informed decision about her future in the industry, and it'll be interesting to see what's next for her. Following her defeat in Philadelphia, rumors circulated that Lynch would be taking time off WWE, but this week, the man seemingly quashed any reports of a break. When the WWE UK Twitter account promoted Lynch for an upcoming tour, Lynch responded sarcastically by saying the internet had said that she was taking time off. Lynch will be on this tour, but time continues to tick away on her WWE contract, and it remains to be seen whether one of WWE's most successful women resigns or doesn't. As we've seen in wrestling, very few streaks last forever. Just ask The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30, and this week's Raw saw the end of an impressive run of success. For last week's SmackDown, the show was the 18th consecutive TV sellout for WWE, but WWE didn't hit 19, as Raw in Montreal still had some tickets available when the show went live. This is disappointing for WWE, but 18 sellouts in a row shows how well the company is doing right now, even if the numbers in the Bell Center weren't enough to keep this streak alive. On last week's Raw, WWE aired a package announcing that Sheamus would be making his return, and on SmackDown, it was confirmed that his comeback would be on Raw in Montreal. Sure enough, the Celtic Warrior was on last night's Raw with a new theme that blended his two previous songs, and the crowd in Quebec were behind Sheamus as he faced Ivar. Sheamus showed no signs of ring rust, battling back and forth against the super heavyweight, and left fans in awe as he delivered white noise from the top rope. Sheamus got the win with a kneecap, followed by a thunderous brogue kick, and got the pinfall in what he's hoping will be the first of many victories now that he's back on TV. It'll be interesting to see how Sheamus fits into the era of former rival Triple H, and who do you want to see him face next after eight months out with an injury? Let us know in the comments. More from Raw is Dominic Mysterio faced Andrade in this week's show, and with the help of JD McDonough, Dirty Dom was able to hold his own against the former US champion. In arguably the move of the night, Dominic hit a Canadian destroyer on the apron to Andrade, and it's a testament to how far Dom has come along as a safe worker in a matter of years. In the end, though, Andrade got the win after fighting back and hitting a twisting hammerlock DDT, and if you've seen the Judgment Day, you'll know the action didn't stop there. Post-match, JD McDonough swooped in to attack the weakened Andrade and, along with Dominic, began a one-sided beatdown on the ex-AEW star that was interrupted by Ricochet. The one and only has been crossing paths with the Judgment Day as of late, and there are worse uses for both Ricochet and Andrade on TV. Keeping them as loose allies with the draft on the horizon will keep them busy until Triple H and Co. decide what to do with them in the coming months on TV. At WrestleMania 40 Sunday, The Undertaker made a surprise appearance during the main event, which astonished fans as he laid waste to The Rock with a chokeslam. The Rock had appeared to attack John Cena, who himself had tried to take out the interfering solo Sokoa, but these chaotic scenes were a last-minute call for the Phenom. 
Speaking on his Six Feet Under podcast, The Undertaker revealed that his appearance at WrestleMania was a spontaneous one, as he explained, It happened pretty spontaneously. We got to Philadelphia on Wednesday that week. I think I got a call Tuesday from Triple H that said, Hey, a lot of things are going on. A lot of thoughts are being put into this. Would you want to be a part of it? I was like, look, if it works and I can be of help to it in any way, if I could be of help, fine. Whatever you guys need, just let me know. I don't hear anything else until Thursday. I get a text from Michael Hayes saying, We're coming up with some ideas. I'm like, cool, let me know. That was it. Then, I'm at the One Dead Man show. I get a text from Paul Heyman. I'm like, huh, interesting. This is picking up steam here. I had gone back and forth, and I get a text during Sunday. It's hardly a surprise that the spot was a last-minute situation for the Phenom, as his spot was originally going to be filled by Steve Austin and play on the epic Rock Austin feud of the past. WWE and Austin couldn't come to terms financially though, and the Phenom was used instead, but being a second choice didn't make the dead man's appearance any less epic in Philly. Right now, few WWE superstars are hotter than Drew McIntyre, but this renaissance for the former world heavyweight champion comes at an interesting point in his career. As previously reported, McIntyre's contract extension was slated to expire before WrestleMania, but additional time was allocated, pushing the deadline further down the line. Fightful Select has revealed that Drew's contract is set to conclude before June, placing him in a potentially pivotal position as negotiations have begun between the two sides. Despite the uncertainty surrounding his future, WWE sources have praised McIntyre's professionalism in navigating the situation amidst delays that caught many by surprise. The timing of these talks have raised eyebrows, with previous Vice President Dan Ventrell reportedly initiating contact in March, coinciding with McIntyre's WrestleMania program. Not only did Drew feud with Seth Rollins leading into the event, but he also worked with CM Punk, and McIntyre has also been promoted heavily for Clash of the Castle Scotland. The inclusion of the first Scottish-born WWE Champion on promotional material shouldn't be a surprise, but it does add another layer of intrigue to this unresolved contract situation. Ultimately, Drew McIntyre will choose what he thinks is in his best interest, and do you think that'd be to remain with WWE, or could a new chapter in another company be in his future? On Raw, McIntyre was still fuming over losing the World Heavyweight title at WrestleMania and losing the number one contenders match last week, and couldn't control his anger. During an attempted interview, McIntyre didn't utter a word and kicked a monitor in frustration, which caught the attention of LA Knight, who showed his own experience destroying a TV. McIntyre is probably regretting goading CM Punk at WrestleMania, as Punk's attack allowed Damian Priest to cash in money in the bank, and the Scottish Warrior is far from happy. Earlier this month, it was officially confirmed that Matt Hardy's contract with AEW had expired, ending his four-year run with the All Elite promotion. During an episode of the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy podcast, the veteran spoke about his contract status and confirmed that he is a free agent and has been interacting with everyone. Yes, I am a free agent now, just negotiating, talking, I've interacted with everyone, still interacting with AEW, and that's where we're at right now. Whenever my deal ended up running out, that gave me the opportunity to negotiate and speak to everyone available, really weigh in on my options, and that's what I'm doing right now. If Matt is speaking with everyone, that would seemingly include WWE. And on Twitter, Matt recently raised eyebrows when he shared a clip from the latest episode of Monday Night Raw. Matt Hardy has made his name in many promotions, but where do you want to see him next? Give us your thoughts down below in the comments. On his podcast, Matt discussed AEW airing the all-in backstage footage last week, and while he said it's very unlike AEW, he's not opposed to it, and said it could be beneficial to the company. Hardy also shared his thoughts on Jack Perry's suspension, and believes it was excessive and outweighed the crime, and that he'll be happy once AEW brings back the scapegoat. Tony Khan is said to be really mad at Perry for essentially costing AEW CM Punk, and while he should be back on TV one day, there's still no word on what's to come for the former Jungle Boy. In recent days, WWE has seen several departures from the off-camera team, and now another notable name has said goodbye to the company. On Instagram, renowned artist Rob Schamberger shared that he had finished with WWE after over a decade and was grateful for the opportunity that the company gave him. Schamberger's art of wrestlers and iconic moments has become a hotly collected item, 
And in his post, Rob said that while his WWE chapter has come to a close, a new one is about to begin. For years, Jim Ross gave his voice to some of WWE's most iconic moments and matches, and like many others, the AEW broadcaster has taken notice of WWE's new era. On a recent episode of his Grilling JR podcast, Ross spoke about WWE's shift towards embracing pro wrestling, a term Michael Cole used at WrestleMania. He said, Logical as hell. I've never looked at pro wrestling as a negative term. I've been a proponent of pro wrestling. That's what we do. That's what it is. So roll with it. Why not? JR added that WWE's willingness to embrace pro wrestling is a strategic move to distance themselves from Vince McMahon following his resignation from WWE in January 2024. Janelle Grant's lawsuit also names WWE and John Laurinaitis, as JR explained, That's another one of the waves goodbye to Vince. We're not doing this thing anymore. We're going to do pro wrestling. That's what the business was predicated on. And any generation you look at, any territory you want to look at, it was all predicated on the success of the live events in these territories. The transition towards a pro wrestling centric approach marks a significant departure for WWE, signaling a departure from its long standing narrative under McMahon's stewardship. While the move has been met positively so far, it remains to be seen whether this will work in the long term or whether longtime fans, accustomed to sports entertainment, will feel alienated. But what do you think? Is WWE's shift towards wrestling resonating with you as a fan? Or do you prefer the tried and tested previous format? Share your thoughts in the comments. In women's tag team action, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven faced Caden Carter and Katana Chance, and in a rarity, it was Green and Niven who got the win. Green got the win for her team in what was Chelsea's first WWE victory in five months, and it's fitting that her win came in her home country of Canada. We mentioned earlier that Chad Gable turned heel on Raw, but there must have been something in the Montreal air as Indy Hartwell also showed heel tactics this week. Despite previously being against Candice LeRae's underhanded methods, the pair defeated Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree this week, and Indy played the difference maker for her team. Ivy Nile attempted to tag herself in, but the ref was distracted, and with the ref's back turned, Indy intervened by taking Maxine out with a cheap shot, clearing LeRae's path to victory. It appears that Indy is now on the same page as LeRae, and if so, this could spell bad news for all the other women's tag teams in WWE. And that was this week's Raw, and what did you make of the show? Let us know in the comments section, and as always, thanks for watching.